I'll be honest guys, it takes an awfully special filament to grab my attention these days. We've all seen various brands of ABS and PLA and even PETs, but these days there's so many around that really it has to be something even more special for me to take attention to and actually make a video about. So what I have here is Voltivo XL Fill Evo. And this one is pretty interesting. Let's get started. So this is XFL Evo from Voltivo, a company based in Taiwan with German management. And the thing that struck me about this filament as being unique is first the approach to packaging and design. It's also, it's very unusual compared to other brands. It's not just a cardboard box that's boring and plain. It's got actually interesting edges like that. And that continues on to the spool design inside. Here we have a nice sort of smoky clear spool. It's an unusual size, 800 grams. So it's not a small like 500, 600 gram, but it's not as large as a regular one kilo spool would be. So I have 1.75 millimeter filament here and the color of the actual XL Fill Evo white, snow white, is a very clean white. And that's quite appreciative and unusual for white filaments. So often there'll be kind of a gray white where they've added colorant, but actually the raw stock wasn't very pure, or they'll kind of have a creamy white, like yellow tinge, which is not very nice. And I definitely appreciate a nice pure white like this. So very well done, Voltivo. So the thing that got me about XL Fill Evo is what is it? Like, it doesn't say it's a PLA, it doesn't say it's an ABS or PET, it just says XL Fill Evo. So I did some snooping into their material safety data sheet. It does appear to have polylactic acid as the base polymer. So I would argue that this is still a modified PLA, but probably very heavily modified judging by the other claims that it makes. The main difference Voltivo is pushing with their XFL Evo versus regular PLA is they're saying that it's a lot stronger and is not going to break or shatter like regular PLA would be and also has a higher temperature resistance of up to 95 degrees Celsius. So although I haven't put this through some rigorous testing like Tom has been doing as part of his Philoween scenario uh, sort of series, but I have been testing it a little bit and I'm going to go through what I found with this filament. Let's start with how it prints, shall we? So the thing I really did like about Voltivo is they have a QR code on their spools as you can see there. So you can fire up a QR code scanner and locate the QR code on the spool and pretty much just locate it like this. So when you navigate to it, basically it comes with all the instructions you need to actually 3D print with this filament, including a temperature outline in terms of what temperatures you should be printing it with. So I went with 210 degrees Celsius on the Prusa i3 Mark II, and I found that worked really quite well with this filament. It does recommend a heated bed, so I heated my bed to 60 degrees C on the PEI surface, and once the print's cool, they just popped right off, and no issues there. So first things first, I wanted to see how the material would print, so I printed my, my favorite uh, high detail print at the moment, which is this cat from the Scanner World Initiative, it's an Egyptian cat, and the print is actually very nice in terms of how the filament behaved, but it's not the best print in terms of how the printer behaved, I suppose I could say. So there's obviously layer inaccuracies and the leg kind of fell off a little bit and then got re-welded re as the layers built up. But the actual filament itself is consistent. There's no under extrusion or missed extrusion. So the actual sort of emblem on the front is cleaner than I'd often get in regular PLA. It just seems to be a bit sharper. Also, it might be to do with the color. Again, I said it's a nice pure snow white, but it also it's a matte snow white. This is not gloss. It is a matte looking filament. And that's unusual as well. Often filaments, especially PLAs, if they're white, will be that horribly gloss sort of look. They have a big sheen to them. And I guess this is the opposite of the Polyarchme Elixir I tested the other week where it had a very high shine. This has a very low or actually no shine. It is very much matte. Something I find very handy is a filament that prints well and strong but also makes support material that can pull away easily. So I tested a few parts that needed support. This is a part from a Fallout 4 Securitron uh, that's on my factory I'm printing it in bits. And again, like the interface layer here between the support and the part is very, very good. And arguably, you know, once you take the support off, there's no uh, impact of the support on the part. So obviously the settings and the slicer are done very well, but the material handled it very well as well. It occurred to me that I should probably do some sort of test to see actually how tough this stuff is instead of just flexing in front of you guys. So I'm gonna put one of these on the ground. These are old files anyway, I don't need them. And I'm gonna stamp on it and see how it fails. So if this was just standard PLA without any modifiers, 
it would probably shatter quite violently. So uh, I'm gonna put it on the ground and let's see what happens. So I think that the uh, it's probably gonna break along here because that that's where the force is gonna be. But it might flatten out. It might explode. I have no idea. I'll put it like that and let's see how it goes. All right. So we get delamination de -lam across there, but not not along the same line, which is interesting. Still pretty tough. Let's try again. Um, <laughs> this is stronger than I thought. <laughs> uh, I can probably just stand on it. How's that? I mean, I don't weigh that much, but that's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, that's a good example. So you can see, it's sort of shattering across the layers there, it's just bent. Yeah, that's pretty tough. I mean, ABS wouldn't, wouldn't last much longer than that. And I'd probably argue that the only one that, only plastic that would survive better than that would be probably nylon. So that's pretty cool. So where does it leave us with the XLFL Evo? Well, I'm not sure how much it costs right now because I was one of the first people to get an actual like retail package of it, which is really, really cool. But if I do find out a link from the guys, I'll send it, put it in the link video description so you can try to buy some. But I find it is a fantastic replacement for regular PLA. If you want parts that have that slight increase in quality and also increase in strength and temperature resistance. And it printed beautifully and the spools are nice. They fit onto most of my machines. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Also again, finding a nice white, especially as an industrial designer, if you're doing form studies or if you're interested in like architecture, that's a hard look to find. I don't know many filaments that have that chalky white like that. They're usually glossy and that it's, it's just something else to add to your repertoire. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video here on Makers Museum. If you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, hit that subscribe button. Helps me out a huge amount. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye.